Finally, our gospel reading today is from Mark. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want for me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those who, whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But to serve. Well, that's what we try to do. That's what I try to do. Um, going back to Paul for a moment. You know, last week, everyone afterwards, I told everybody it was going to be a bad sermon and everything. Everybody was like, oh, it was so good. It was so good. But I finally realized when I got home why. Because my wife and I were talking and I said, Paul did a really nice job on the newsletter. She's like, it was great. I was reading it, you know, during the service. I went, well, now we know. Everybody thought it was great because they were reading his thing. Forget about me. Thanks again, Paul. I mean, when I, fi when I finally got to read it, I was very impressed. Very good. Way to serve. Giving service to God starts with humbling oneself. In today's scripture reading, the Lord explains to the disciples that serving others should be our goal, not to be served. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, for all of us. God tells us right there his expectation for not only himself, but all those who claim to love the Lord. And no matter how much we give, nor how much and how many we serve, we can never be as giving as Jesus was when he went to the cross for all of our sins and transgressions. Never. That does not mean we cannot try to serve. Serving others, serving God, serving our families, both at home and here at church, we must learn to give and serve others in order to be like our Lord and Savior and what he's asked of us. We learn during our life that it is what we give to others that matters the most. Serving others. There are so many different ways in order for one to serve God. First and foremost, we can find ways to better his kingdom of followers. We can lead others to Christ. We are serving our God in a most spectacular way. Bringing people to Christ. Salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He paid the ransom. We have been served. This week and over the past few years even, I have wondered many times what really matters. What should we hold on to? You know, the physical things. How do we know what is right or wrong to hold on to when it is of materialistic value? What is right? What is wrong? If holding on to material things in our lives hold us back from God, then we should move on to letting go of those things. But how do we know when something is of no service anymore? 
How do we know when it, to let go what we think matters? Keep the Bible. Sell the cookbook. Keep the clock. Lose the time. Forget all the things. And just try to remember. Remembering can even be tough, right? I mean, I've forgotten more things in the past year than, well, than what I can remember. There are so many great memories, though, that help me to remember what really matters in life. Not the stuff, not the things, but the who and the whom. Who served us? Who have I served? And most importantly, have we honored and served the Lord? There are many ways to serve the Lord. By being on committees, by showing up every week to make sure we have a service to present to God's people. It takes a lot of people. There are a lot of things that go on to have a Sunday service. Sunday service. That's it right there. Service to the Lord on Sunday. And hopefully Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, etc. Many think that giving is a way to serve the Lord. And that is part of our relationship with God. We will be giving to our offering here in a little bit. That is serving. Serving God by giving to the system created by Him to help us serve those in need. Those who lack a spiritual connection to God. By tithing and giving to God, one can help others and serve. Recently, I heard a message about a church's tithing. The pastor was scolding the congregation for its giving or lack thereof. It seems that the church is struggling to cover its financial commitments for the year. The statement was that 50% of the congregation was not giving financially at all. That, coupled with budget deficits, the church could eventually run out of money. This is not a concept that our church is unfamiliar with. It was just a few short years ago we were running deficits, and the end of the road was in sight. Oh, how quickly God can change the outcome in any situation. And God serves us again. Though we may be better off financially than we were, it does not take much to change the landscape as we have all witnessed throughout our lives. What is right? What is wrong? Is it okay not to give? Is it okay not to serve? The answers are easy. We must learn to give of our time, of our energy, of our love, and we must learn to serve. Not ourselves, but others, God leading as the example. We must serve God. It does not take long in one's life to learn that when you give, it feels better than receiving. Bringing someone else joy and happiness due to being served love and grace by another is of holy importance. The Lord did not come to be served, but to serve. If the Lord of all came down right now from heaven, would you know that you have given everything to Him? Are you ready to serve Him? You see, God is calling you. Sure, you may be busy right now with your super all-American life that finds you busy on your phone or on your iPad or Nintendo game or favorite TV show, but never forget the words that the Lord spoke to us today. We must serve. Serving is living. All the rest will go away someday. Our families come to know this. I know when we dealt with my mom and dad's stuff and them moving in with us and everything, it was a heck of a time. But our family was once again reminded of the reality of time and service yesterday. Christie's Pap had an auction that brought an end to lifetimes of memories and material things before the day he even started there was a feeling of loss and worry and, yes, regret, but there was so much more to remember, to look forward to, to take to the Lord. And, of course, there was prayer and lots of it. 
There was a prayer of thanksgiving for the life that Dawn and Shirley built over 30 years in the same home, the family home. <clears throat> there were prayers that the Wright family would want the house that had been home to so many in the family. There were prayers that, yes, a lifetime of love and commitment and work would be rewarded in a matter of dollars. But to serve, that is what still remained. To serve is to give. To give is to love. And by serving one another, we become closer to the Lord. He is the one who gives us a life full of memories and admiration towards those who have given and served us in our lives. Notice their priority is God. They give and serve because they understand what God meant when He said we are to serve rather than to be served. Serving the Lord and one another can show up in so many different ways throughout our lives. Most of us know how to serve others and God. Then there are some who cannot get past their own hurts and wounds to allow themselves to look outside their own world and into the world that never quits, never gives up. The world as God envisioned it. A world of service rather than selfish wants and materialistic goals. Four years ago this month, we lost our pastor. We lost our way for a period of time, some may say. We were not sure what really mattered, it seemed, but God did not leave us to figure it out on our own. There were many people who stepped up and began to serve in ways that maybe were uncomfortable or unfamiliar, but we continued to serve the Lord. And of course, the Lord has continued to serve us like only He can. That is what God does. He serves us with the bread of life. He serves us with His undeniable peace that covers us up from the mountaintops to the dew on the ground. He blankets us with His love. Much of what I'm learning in seminary has me learning to how to serve others better. Learning to look at your life in a way that appreciates the service someone has given to others is what offers peace in life. It is not the material things, not the gifts or knickknacks, nor the tables and chairs, but the service to others. Service to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, to strangers. Service to the next family that will sit in your pew seats or live in your family home. It is God's service. We may be a church that is blessed with financial security. We may be a church with many wonderful people. But if we quit serving the Lord, if we quit serving one another, then we will be destined to fail our Lord and Savior. We must realize that the money we think we have or need, or the house we owned or sold, or the relationship that we have gained or lost, will all mean nothing if we ever stop learning to serve others. That is what God needs us to do. That is what we must do. Not to be served, but to serve. Are you ready? God is. God is great. God is faithful. And yes, God is calling you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we know how much emphasis you have put on us to love one another and to serve one another rather than to be served. Help us, Lord, to find ways in our lives to help give and serve others that we encounter in this life. Amen.